Hey guys, this is Claudia here from QuickBooks Experts. I've been a bookkeeper for over 20 years, and one of my most popular questions is undeposited funds. And my clients come to me, some of them have so many issues with undeposited funds, and they need to understand why does that happen. Okay, one simple answer, but of course there's a more extended answer, is a flaw on the workflow. Uh, what is the workflow? What is the income workflow in QuickBooks Online? Okay, we have four steps. The first step is to enter an invoice in the system. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, on the left-hand side, plus new, I'm going to, uh, we provided a service for our best client. Okay, and now we're going to send an invoice, calling it sales, and I'm going to charge this for a thousand dollars okay all right so we're gonna go ahead and save and send or save in this case because that's not real okay and then the client this is my best client like I said so this client is gonna go ahead and pay right away so um, next step is just on the left hand side click on the plus new and we're gonna go ahead and receive payment my first step is to put the client's name over here that's my best client Okay, and when I click the client name that outstanding or any outstanding invoices for this client is going to pop up here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that tr transaction and I'm going to record the payment to undeposited funds. Okay, so why do I put it on undeposited funds? Remember, there are four steps. I record the invoice, I record the payment, I record the deposit, and I record, um, I match it in banking. Now, in order for me to record the deposit, I need to put this on undeposited funds. And um, as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned before, if not, I'll mention now again. <laughs> when you are uh, matching income transaction in banking, you do not want to match them to a payment and definitely not to an invoice. The reason why it can create lots of issues and I've seen clients that actually receive or deposit, a, you know, several checks at the same time, and then they match in banking, or sometimes it doesn't match correctly because the numbers don't match. There's all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems. So never match it to an invoice, never invoice, uh, match it to a payment. Um, if I put the bank over here is going to try to match it in banking straight and it's going to skip that deposit part and I don't want to because that th this workflow will, will actually guarantee accuracy of your books uh, so that's why we have those four steps okay date that's enough of that right on the positive funds transaction save and close okay and like I said the next step no, step number three is to record the uh, deposit Pretty much almost every single um, income transaction um, workflow is going to be here on the plus new on the left-hand side menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on bank deposits. And voila, I'm going to record here. I'm going to check the date. The date is correct. The bank is correct. I'm going to go ahead and save and close. The next step is to match this transaction in banking. Guys, I'm not going to do that because this is not a valid client. So what I'm going to do right now is just delete everything that I did, okay? Now, you don't want to go ahead and delete transactions like I'm deleting here unless you know exactly that this is either a duplicate transaction or you have the, you have the authorization from your client to get rid of that transaction um, and you know for sure. So don't go deleting anything unless you know 100% that it's, it's uh, okay. All right, so if you click on the counterclock here on bank deposit, you see all the deposits you, you made. Or um, if you scroll down, if it's not here, scroll down, view more, and you're going to be able to see it. Mine is right here, see? And if I click here, I'll go ahead and open up that transaction. And I am first deleting the bank deposit. I'm going to go backwards because I need to, to delete what I did last first. So delete the bank deposit. First, then I go to receive payment, count a clock, all the payments I'm, I made in the past is going to be right here. If, it's, if I can't see here, scroll down, view more, 
Go ahead and click on this transaction, click on more, delete. You can also void if you're not, sh you know, if, you're, if you want to keep some kind of records of what happened, you can do that. And finally, you'll see um, the invoice same way. So you're going to go ahead and click on the plus new, click on the invoice, count a clock here, and my transaction is right here, right? So easy, and I am deleting this transaction. Keep in mind, this is a bogus transaction. I want it out of QuickBooks. That's why I did it. Okay, now I have two transactions here that I'm going to do the bank deposit, okay? So I found, first thing uh, you want to do is, for instance, I'm going to do an example of a square, a square transaction because a client asked me in the past, I had an undeposited funds video before, and they asked about square, uh, square transaction. Um, what if I have a bunch of square transaction here that is not matching in bank? It's, it's just stuck in here. And um, keep in mind that if the amount is not matching in banking, it's not going to match. And a lot of times, the problem is that um, when you connected the square, especially in the past, right now we actually have a new system, but if you connected in the past and the, the mapping was not done, done right, such as Maybe you don't have a square fees uh, account in your QuickBooks, which is very necessary. By the way, if you want to know a little bit about square transaction, watch my, my prior video. That's going to explain to you how to connect and so on and so forth. So anyhow, the bottom line is that I have this transaction here. And I if I go into banking, I'm going to go to banking. So I, I wrote down the amount, the date. I'm going into banking. I'm going to put the date here which is April 16th. And the other issue could be also taxes, right? If your your taxes are not correct or are not the same in Square versus with QuickBooks, then they're not going to match. So you want to make sure that you correct that, uh, the taxes either in, in QuickBooks or Square so that they can both match. All right, so I see that that transaction came through. The amount was 198.80. The next step is to go into Square and find out the fees because there's going to be Square fees, right? And I know that the total amount was for 250. I did research this transaction, and I know that there was a Square fee of seven dollars and fifty-five cents, and I was also we were also paying on a loan of forty-three dollars and sixty-five cents, right? So part of this, the money that I received from the client went into square fees and some of it went to square loans. So uh, obviously at this point you already have a liability for square loans. And we're gonna go ahead and record this deposit. And we need to reflect those deduction. How do I do that? Okay, so we're gonna select the transaction. The date is April 16th. I need to change this. The date is very important by the way guys, <laughs> very important can't enforce it so important <laughs> all right the account uh, is right here so if it's not you would select whatever account you're depositing to and right below it says add funds to this deposit here i'm going to put the deductions that i received from this deposit if you can't see this is because this arrow is pointing to the right to open up click on the arrow and it's going to go pointing down and voila here it is okay so I'm gonna put here this is square so this transaction already came from square from the past on the old system and I need to clear the, those out okay um, and the account is gonna be an expense account this is square fees I already have it in the system It's an expense and on the amount is going to be a negative amount because it's actually taking away from my total deposit, right? So $7.55. At the same time, when I'm doing this, I'm, out, I'm also debiting my Square fees expense account. Okay, here was also Square. On the next line, I'm going to record my loan payment. Okay, and usually on the details, you're going to find, um, you, you're going to have to log into to your square and find out the details of your loan payment. I know that in this case, I'm paying $43.65. Oh, by the way, <laughs> it's a negative amount, okay? We're paying off that loan. 
So taking out liability out of your books. Okay, so the total amount here should add up to $198.80. The date is, oops, look at this. I put March 16. No, it's April 16. Sometimes you can make an error like that and save it. And I'll show you how to fix it, by the way. So anyhow, save and close here. I suppose I made that mistake and I, I, I try to, to match it. It's not going to show up there. So what I do is go back to the plus sign to bank deposit. You know that <laughs> counterclock so useful is going to show me all the prior deposit. I can click on that transaction and fix the date. Isn't that great? So great shortcuts, by the way. All right, so we're back to banking. Okay, this is all the transactions flowing into your, your bank, uh, from your bank account into QuickBooks. And those transactions are for review. So it means that it has not been entered into QuickBooks. I find that transaction and voila, it's matching to a deposit. Like I said, income transaction needs to always be matched to a deposit. Not a payment, not an invoice. <laughs> want to make sure that it's done to a deposit. All right, so... If you want to find details about this one, you click on the number, click on the deposit. You see that's the one that we actually just entered. Everything's correct. I'm going to go ahead and match it. Yay! <laughs> I always love when I get to that point. So let's go to the next transaction. So this one is not a square transaction, just a regular transaction. That, um, but this, this also was another merchant account, and they also charge fees. And that's the same issue as the other one. So um, here it says $200, March 3rd. So what I do, I go into banking. All right, I'm going to click on dates. And I'm going to March 3rd. March 3rd. March 3rd, apply. All right. Voila, this is the transaction. It was $189. I went to my merchant account. I, I verified that the, the fees was $11. So this is the right one, and the fees was $11. So what to do next? Plus new. Let's record that bank deposit. So the date, we got to change here to whatever date it happened in banking when it was really deposited in banking. Okay, click on the transaction, but it says $200. We got to put the fees. So I'm going to put the merchant service here and bank fees or bank charges, whatever you have for the expense account of a merchant, merchant fees, whatever it is. And remember, this step here is going to be negative $11. And my total here on this deposit has to amount to $189. Save and close. Whatever happened in the deposit has to be exactly the amount that was uh, deposited in banking. It cannot be, you have to fix it if it's incorrect. If it is a tax discrepancy, you can go into the invoice, make, make changes. Um, keep in mind that if you already recorded the payment, you need to delete the payment. If you already recorded the deposit, you need to delete the deposit, delete the payment, and then make corrections to the invoice, record the payment, record the deposit. If you made a mistake uh, on the payment and you didn't record the deposit yet, delete the payment, go to the invoice. Always start with the last one first. Okay, so now we're going to go to March 3rd. Like I said, I don't like to be scrolling up and down. I can go over here and voila, put my date. All right, hey, it's right here. I already verify everything is right. I'm gonna make it easy, just match. And I know it's right, okay? This is how you solve your undeposited funds. If you wanna go back and verify your reports, you're gonna go to balance sheet. This year to date. Run report. <laughs> it's zero. I love to see this number. <laughs> That's what it should be on your balance sheet, okay? Love this number. Hey, guys, if you like this video, uh, please like the video here and put your notes. Subscribe to our channel. 
It's just, we love to put together educational videos like this, but in order for us to continue doing it, we need more subscribers, we need more viewers, and we need you to tell us what, what you want to view next. So write down in your comments if you have any questions, if you want a certain subject to be covered, uh, write down, down below and we'll be able to cover that for you. Uh, thanks again for watching this video. We hope to see you next time. And until next time, I'll see you later.